My name is Gary Fink. The title of the collection that's about to come out in early 2013 is The Proper Words for Sin. What I'm concerned about in short story writing uh, are locating stories, and so therefore Western Pennsylvania, Central Pennsylvania are really important to the work, and my stories are character driven, meaning that I think the most important for, thing for me as a writer is to hear the voice, whether it's of a boy or a young girl growing up in the 50s and 60s, or whether it's a middle-aged man uh, trying to take care of his life in the late 20th century and early 21st century. I think it's fair to say that these stories are divided about 50-50 between coming-of-age stories, uh, mostly boys growing up in the 50s and 60s, set against the events of those times. Uh, for instance, a story called The Blazer Sestina, which uses the Kennedy assassination to locate the story, but the story is about something entirely different. Uh, the stories that, are, that take place in the recent past also use uh, real current events from those times. The story is called The Fierceness of Need, uh, and even though it's primarily about uh, a young teacher and his wife who happens to be pregnant, uh, I've taken advantage of the Three Mile Island story by setting it in 1979 in March in Harrisburg. Uh, I've, I happen to live nearby. I know the details to the point where to locate a story, I actually could drive to Harrisburg, stand on the river bank, look across the river at Three Mile Island and try to reduce uh, the closeness of that particular experience, uh, especially amplified by the fact that the wife is pregnant. I know that my short stories have often been called quirky. Uh, I'm not sure if I heard somebody describe someone else's stories as quirky, I might think that they were highly experimental and maybe odd for oddness's sake. Uh, but in, in my case, I think I just take advantage of the fact that I'm always on the lookout for those small, important details, uh, metaphorical perhaps, but not experimental uh, in the sense that most people think about it. Uh, the experiment for me is to try to place characters in situations uh, that they find extraordinarily difficult to deal with and then find out a, and then find a way to redeem themselves somehow uh, and make their way in this world. Interestingly enough, even though I direct an undergraduate creative writing program and spent all my teaching time in the classroom running creative writing workshops, I'm a self-taught writer and never really took any of the creative writing courses. In my creative writing workshops, uh, what I want to do is emphasize to students that they ought to immerse themselves in reading as well as writing. Um, and there's not that much difference, I don't think, between teaching fiction writing and nonfiction writing and poetry writing. It's all about language. It's still all about characters. Uh, although I happen to write primarily narrative poetry, uh, and so there's some reason for me to say that. Uh, but the same thing that happens in, in fiction, characters that we care about, characters that we're interested in finding out what happens to them, and then concerned about the choices we make, are the same things that drive narrative, creative nonfiction. Uh, so I can talk about the same things in memoir writing. What is it about someone's experience uh, that engages a reader and makes them care about those characters and the choices that they make? Next projects. Uh, next projects for me are probably, they're always, they're always always current projects. Uh, I happen to be one of those writers I think are pretty rare in that I write poetry, I write fiction, 
I write creative nonfiction. Uh, and so maybe the most common question I get when I do a reading somewhere is, uh, how do you bounce from one to the next? Why do you get up and do it? And the answer is, is pretty difficult to answer. Um, sometimes I simply say, well, it's summertime, and so I have more time to write short stories. But that's uh, a pretty glib sort of answer. The answer really is that I make myself available every morning, usually by 6 a.m., uh, in order to discover what it is uh, that seems important to me at that particular time. If it turns out to be a short story, that's going to engage me over a period of days and weeks. If it's a poem, uh, that time is shorter. But the important thing is to make myself available every day, practically, even Christmas sometimes, although I think I skip that. Uh, but the one thing I have self-discipline for in this world is uh, to make myself available to write. Sometimes people think that I'm a very prolific writer. Uh, this is my fifth collection of short stories. I don't see myself prolific, uh, but it's nice to be able to choose a dozen stories from among perhaps a hundred or so recent publications. The preceding book, I felt even more fortunate uh, since my fourth collection won the Flannery O'Connor Prize and was published by the University of Georgia. It was called Sorry I Worried You, in case I can do a promotion for that. At the same time, I'm speaking to this particular book. My name is Gary Fink. The title of the collection that's about to come out in early 2013 is The Proper Words for Sin.